Okay, to conclude this chapter and in fact this course, um, let's look at the summary of this uh, local climate solutions, which is a good way to end actually. Uh, hopefully you can pick and choose the chapters because they are not so dependent on each other. So you can package the chapters differently to create different baskets of uh, courses or uh, educational modules. So in this chapter what we've learned so far as summarized by the author uh, is that local solutions at the level of neighborhoods, cities, towns and districts are necessary complements to solutions focused on higher level organizations such as nation states and global institutions networks. So for sure CO2, carbon dioxide and carbon in general is a global problem because of its uh, quick uh, mixing, long residence times um, and the global uh, human community being involved in emissions. Um, but solutions will uh, ultimately be uh, largely local other than carbon capture and sequestration if they scale up and other things we have looked up. Uh, looked at in terms of transferable solutions like replacements to HFCs, uh, etc. Right? Um, UN's new urban agenda is uh, stimulating the rise of local approaches to climate change. So urban uh, environments provide some unique uh, problems to be uh, solved in this way, especially with localization and green infrastructure. Uh, rural communities need to be part of this climate solutions though because there is that strong interdependency and in general the disparities tend to be high when uh, uh, urban center becomes too powerful uh, like all the big cities, uh, right? Uh, rural communities uh, then uh, also need localized climate change solutions that can strengthen the urban rural linkages uh, that include composting systems, carbon farming, agroforestry, farmers markets and community supported agriculture. Localization is a narrative framework useful for elevating the value of integrated territorially specific or place-based as we said before. Uh, interventions seeking climate friendly development, food energy, water security, equity and justice. Okay, so the course has tried hard to stay on top of uh, equity and justice as well. So that's good to also think of those in this localization context. Localization is a key component in bioregional theory and practice. So uh, bioregional theory and practice provide good uh, localized field uh, experiments which can be used for education, awareness, uh, data uh, and transferable solutions. Localization is visible where place-based investments are made, for instance in renewable energy microgrids, stormwater management and water harvesting systems, carbon neutral and zero waste local industry, urban agriculture and farmers markets. So when they work they are just unimaginably uh, fantastic for uh, the community as a whole. And often they don't even have to be seen as climate actions. They can just be seen as making lives better and more uh, fun with uh, public spaces, clean air, clean water and healthier lifestyles, right? Climate action plans are comprehensive roadmaps that outline specific activities uh, an agency should undertake to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. That's a broader statement, we know that. Green infrastructure has become a significant element in localizing climate action planning focused on migration and adaptation, especially with uh, migration because of climate related displacements or COVID related kind of issues or conflicts driving people away and conflicts themselves often related to climate change and so on. Green infrastructure is great to absorb these shocks. Uh, green infrastructure couples natural and human systems in efforts to make life and living in cities, towns and working lands as well regeneratively sustainable, resilient and healthy. So they are climate solutions, but we can also see them for all these co-benefits. 
Green infrastructure is made up of undergirding support structures, systems, and linkages needed to meet uh, needs for food, water, uh, energy, and healthy space for living, working, and recreating. Uh, green infrastructure thus interacts with and can be used to improve other forms of infrastructure such as the electric grid, water provisioning, and transportation. Green infrastructure can restore and enhance ecosystems, providing carbon sequestration and other uh, benefits and co-benefits. Green infrastructure using biotic approaches includes regenerating damaged natural systems, improving natural sinks for carbon through afforestation, reducing deforestation, and restoring soil organic carbon. How many things can we list? Is it obvious already? Okay. Right? So, very critical. Urban forests, including food forests, are a form of green infrastructure great news. The global annual potential for carbon mitigation from afforestation, reduced deforestation and restoration of soil organic carbon is about 8 to 12 gigatons per year and right now we are in the range of 20 gigatons per year in terms of uh, becoming carbon neutral and heading towards the uh, 2 degree C target with 66 percent probability. So more the better in terms of carbon mitigation bending the curve. Turning food waste into energy and soil is a good way to sequester carbon. Implementing food waste reduction programs and energy recovery systems can maximize the utilization of food produced and recover energy from food that is not consumed. Food waste is massive. I think in the US the estimate is almost 40 percent of the food is wasted. Worldwide it is I think it's around 30 percent. Okay? Starvation and food waste go together. It's often supply and just that uh, uh, improved uh, incomes come with food wastage because there is more dining out where there is more waste and there is also just a little uh, more carelessness maybe. Food in general costs so little so people are not that uh, eager on watching carefully the food wastage. Okay. The carbon and other greenhouse gases emitted in producing this wasted food contribute 3.3 gigatons annually to carbon emissions. Civically engaged, well-informed community leaders and residents are necessary to democratically bolster climate action planning. Universities can facilitate collective efforts to democratize climate change mitigation and adaptation. Place-based or rooted university community partnerships can help establish the kind of green civic uh, and cyber infrastructure. So green infrastructure, cyber infrastructure uh, and civic infrastructure linkages necessary to support globally minded localization. So localization is still important and bioregional transitions to a post carbon world. How amazing is that? Good uh, positive note to end on, but a lot uh, remains to be done, right? So creating localization and local green infrastructure and rooted universities with community engagement uh, is exciting way to do research and I hope it motivates a lot of the young faculty especially in India and other developing countries uh, where lots of new institutions are coming up, a lot of investment is being made in research uh, everything is counted by papers right now but maybe someday the metric will include um, efforts uh, such as these and in the paper that I referred to before on uh, building bridges to sustainability, we talked about what are the various measures that could help academia connect with local solutions. So localization and green infrastructure rooted university concept is really critical in that uh, bridging. If proper metrics are developed to uh, evaluate faculty because faculty need tenure, they need promotions, they need their recognition or whatever. So some change in thinking is required at all levels and hopefully it will happen. You be part of it, okay?